Well, over the past uh, few weeks, actually, I've completed the process of sanding all the gears down uh, to get a nice flat surface on them. And I've hence cleaned up the lathe as I said I would. It's all cleaned of all the debris, it's been lubricated, and um, I've adjusted the backlash on the on the cross slide. Now for this operation getting the backlash set up just right, and I'm talking about setting it up electronically in Mach 3 in my case, but whatever your control program is, because you know we're going to be turning blanks that um, begin as what I tend to call you know round rectangles uh, or almost round blanks. I mean, don't forget they were cut on a bandsaw, so they have, you know, square and round edges. There's no real good way to get a, a measure of what the diameter is because it's 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 different depending on where you measure it. Um, so I'll show you the process of what I go through, but the but the bottom line is gears have to be turned down to a very specific size. The particular gear I'm working on now has to be turned to a final diameter, diameter of 1.841 inches. So if you don't have your back layer set right, uh, that's never going to happen. Um, so when I set the backlash, um, you know, using, there are dozens of procedures you can find on YouTube, but after setting it in the normal way, I then moved the cross slide, you know, large distances, small distances, back and forth, back and forth with a test indicator um, to confirm that you know everywhere throughout the travel the backlash was being properly compensated for and I really did get it down to, to zero. So now what I'm going to do I've positioned the, uh, the cutting tool so that it just clears the um, the widest point on, on either of these two gear blanks here that I'm going to be cutting and I'm also cutting the ABS backer as well. But um, then I go into the turning wizards that come with Mach 3, and I set up a little turning um, program to start, you know, just off the par. We'll cut air the first couple of passes. And then I'm going to cut down to. Um, see, this is where you have to sort of guess. But you don't want to cut to the final diameter because you want to do that really in two passes to make sure you've got it right. So I'm going to cut down to, oh, I don't know, maybe a tenth of an inch or less um, greater than the final diameter. And then I'll take a set of measurements, reset everything, and go to the final diameter. So let me show you that process. I've... All right, so I'm going to... Um, run the lathe at around 1400 RPM. My, my Z fee is four inches a minute and I'm taking three one thousandths off the diameter on each pass. Um, so the first pass is just cutting air because I I, all I did was try to get the tool close to the final diameter, or to the largest possible diameter, considering that the part is not exactly round. All right, it's it started cutting metal now, and you can hear the um, <laughs> that it's you know not an even cut because well as you know the blank isn't isn't perfectly round so you'll hear that for a while until we get the gear into a rounded shape and then it will make the more conventional cutting sound. The 
getting very close to the final, not the final, but the intermediate dimension here where the gear blank should be just about round. I should have mentioned before that in addition to making sure that the, the backlash is set correctly, um, this arbor that I've made uh, to hold the gear blank is set up in a, in a forge or chuck and it's very important that you, um, you know, use a, an indicator against this part and make sure that it's turning, you know, perfectly um, concentric to the, um, to the, to the axis here. Um, so at this point, as you can see, I hope you can see, the gear is um, essentially round. Um, what I'm going to do, I know I cut it, or I, the, the software believes it cut it to uh, a diameter of 1.95, so now I'm going to take a check and it is measuring point 195, which means that all of my backlash and other calculations were all correct. So if it hadn't been, if this had been off by a little bit, um, what I would have done is adjusted the DRO in, uh, in Mach 3 to match the actual diameter. Uh, you know, because we know that the, well, actually I would have advanced the x-axis, because the x-axis backed off as the last step of the operation, but I would have put it back to where it made the last cut, and then I would have set the DRO to compensate, you know, had there been any error here, but there isn't any error, so I don't have to do that. So now, I just, I just went back into the, tool, into the turning wizard, and I changed it so that the starting diameter is the 1.95 that we know we're at right now and that the finish diameter is the 1.841 that this gear blank has to be made at. And I backed off on the cutting depth. I'm now only removing two thousandths instead of three from the diameter. Uh, so when this operation finishes, the gear blank should be exactly right. This is the uh, <laughs> hair <laughs> that gets left behind. It, as you can see, it comes off quite easily. And now, just to um, be sure check this and it's within it's just about exact it's within half a thou of um, yeah it's um, it's within half a thou of uh, the final diameter, and that's about as good as I can ever get. That's not going to make any, not cause any problem on the gear cutting. So that's how I turn a, a, a round rectangle into a circle, and I proceed like this for each of the different blank sizes. Um, and then the next, the next step is the actual tooth cutting, which is the fun part.